Hello and welcome to today's lecture on the asset pricing models and for, uh, we will be discussing one of the asset pricing models that is capital assets pricing model in this lecture. Now uh, the capital assets pricing model was uh, improvement over the uh, uh, portfolio theory that was given by the Harry Markowitz. Uh, this theory, uh, this asset pricing models were first introduced by the Sherp in 1964 when he introduced the CAPE model. Now let me first uh, bring bring up the uh, what a CAPE model is, it's capital assets pricing model. Now let me build up the background of this CAPE model. Say for example I have this Mr. X who is investing into the portfolio. He has the, the same $1,000 now if he decides to invest into uh, say for example the stocks of ITC limited now let us take an example say for example this ITC uh, company's labors uh, went to a strike so because of this labor strike uh, the stocks of the ITC limited are going to get affected there will be a fall in the price of the stocks or say for example uh, uh, there is a less sales turnover uh, and because of this less sales turnover there will be a fall in the price of the ITC limited now these types of these are the risks that are affecting the stocks uh, of the ITC limited and they are stock specific risk Now this stock specific risk is also known as unsystematic risk. Consider another case where uh, this uh, Mr. X decides to invest this one dollar into uh, a diversified portfolio of uh, a nifty 50 stocks. Now, uh, if he is going to invest into the nifty stocks nif or in the proportion of the nifty 50 stocks, does this labor strike uh, uh, going to affect him? Uh, maybe, because maybe a very little because if ITC is a part of the nifty 50, but overall the other 49 stocks may be performing well for him. So uh, he may be facing a very lower amount of the risk. In this case, this type of a risk, he is diversified away and uh, uh, it is diversified away by uh, investing into the portfolio. Now, uh, however, if there is a change in country's interest rate, or the G or there's an increase or in inflation in such a scenario the all the stocks of the nifty may get affected and uh, the, and uh, this risk is uh, common to all the stocks and such type of a risk is known as systematic risk now since uh, this labor strike and the lesser stone over in the ITC stocks was diversified away by investing into the uh, into the uh, portfolio of the stocks and this risk was known as unsystematic risk however this type of a risk cannot be diversified away and it is known as the systematic risk now the fundamental uh, 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 fundamental assumption or the base of this capital asset pricing model is the is same is says that the uh, individual must be compensated only for taking the systematic risk but not she should not be compensated for taking the systematic risk so the capital asset pricing model says that uh, the expected returns on the security should be completely based on the systematic risk because it is this systematic risk which is actually faced by an investor rather than the uh, unsystematic risk that can be diversified away by investing into the portfolios now uh, let me talk about what the cap model says about cap model is now cash capital assets pricing model says that expected returns are equal to risk-free rate plus 
beta uh, multiplied by the equity risk premium now equity risk premium is equal is equal to return on the market minus the risk free rate so this is the fundamental cap and model that says that uh, the uh, uh, expected returns are equal to uh, this uh, this uh, the risk free rate plus beta and the risk and the equity risk premium that is equal to risk on market minus the risk free rate now let me draw up two lines uh, here we tell uh, you are the difference between the CML and the SML uh, uh, say for example I have the CML here and I have security market line here now I know that uh, the fundamental uh, risk major for the CML is beta that is a major of systematic risk and this, these are the expected returns now the fundamental major of uh, risk in case of SML is standard deviation that is a major of total risk and these are expected returns both of these equations are in the form of y is equal to a plus bx. Now uh, y is uh, alpha is the intercept that is equal to risk free rate. And now the beta and over here also risk free rate. Now the equation for this SML is equal to what is i equal to y is equal to the expected returns. Now y here is also equal to the expected returns. Uh, the intercept is risk free rate. Plus, plus the beta or, or the slope is equal to risk of the market minus risk free rate divided by the standard deviation uh, into the now uh, the, uh, this measure over here is nothing but the shear ratio uh, into the standard deviation of the portfolio now uh, over here the beta is equal to risk of the market minus risk free rate divided by beta into beta of the portfolio which is nothing but the Renor ratio essentially this beta is equal to 1 that is why we don't write this beta and we write that expected risk is equal to risk free rate plus rm minus rfr into beta that is a fundamental cap model which assumes that a relevant measure of the risk is only the systematic risk rather than uh, taking into consideration the total uh, risk now uh, now let me talk about another related concept that is the security characteristic line take it let me take an example say this I have one two three four and five time periods and I have the risk free rate that is equal to 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent 10 percent and 10 percent now suppose I have the uh, uh, returns on the market that is equal to 17, 19, 14, 18 and I have 22. Let me take the returns on any square T say for example ITC. Uh, they are equal to say for example 25, uh, 29, uh, 19, uh, 27, uh, 35 now what is the excess return on the market uh, it is 7 it is 9 here it is 4 here it is 8 here and it's 12 here now let me take up the excess returns that I am earning on the ITC limited more than the RFR that is 15 percent then it is 19 percent 
then I have 9%, then I have 17%, and then I have 25%. If I plot these excess returns, on the market on x axis and excess returns on the security on the y axis I have and taking the intercept as RFR I will get what is known as the security characteristic line. Now security characteristic line measures actually the excess returns on the market and the extra excess return on the particular security. Now uh, let me introduce you to the multi-factor risk models and arbitrage pricing theory. This is actually an alternative to CAPM model. Now, uh, fundamentally, this uh, all, uh, all this uh, multi-factor risk model is an improvement over the capital uh, capital assets pricing model, and how I sometimes use it as an alternative. It, it says that uh, uh, th uh, there is not a single measure of risk. Rather, there has to be a multiple measures of risk. They can be the interest rate. They can be changed in the inflation or etc. So this model says that uh, we should not be focused on just one single measure, right? rather we should talk about uh, the multiple risk measures. However, this model says does not identify which risk measures to be taken. It only says that there are multiple risk measures that you can take. However, it does not uh, uh, say that which risk measures you need to take. So accordingly, the expected returns as per this model is equal to uh, risk-free rate plus beta into risk premium. Say for example, this risk premium on the basis of change in interest rates, then we'll take another beta and that is risk premium that we want on the basis of change in inflation rates and so on uh, and the expected uh, return. Now uh, this uh, model in itself says that uh, how much is the change in the how much uh, how much risk premium you want uh, for a particular level of risk for a change in the particular particular unit of a risk uh, for example a change in the interest rates and what is the sensitivity of the returns to that measure of the risk and accordingly it takes into consideration a number of measures of the risk to take to uh, form the expected uh, returns.